Hello everyone and welcome to this, my first of two videos on the Cambo 2SCN. This is my first 4x5 monorail camera video, so I'm very excited to, to share this. Monorail cameras are the high-end professional cameras. They can do basically anything. They are, have movements galore and when I eventually get around to making my video about camera movements, this will be the camera I use to demonstrate how they all work. This is a high-end professional grade studio camera because it is very large and very heavy. Designed for professional 4x5 photography. You can see how long this has like a two foot monorail on it. It's, it's huge. The case for this thing is gigantic. This is a large format monorail camera. It has no meter. The shutter speeds on it vary by whatever lens you choose to mount to the front. And I have no lenses currently in Cambo lens boards for this camera, so we'll have to do a little bit of make-believe later when we see how lenses work with this camera. It has 100% viewfinder magnification, meaning that the image on the viewfinder is 100% the size of what will be on the film. And it also has 100% frame coverage, meaning that what is in the viewfinder is what will appear in the film. It has an interchangeable focusing screen right here. You can see this one has the grid screen. I don't recall what the standard is for this camera, whether it's grid or plain, but you can change them out. There are third party options. You could also put a Fresnel in there if you wanted to. And the flash sinks at any speed that the lenses will fire at because this camera requires that your lenses have a leaf shutter on them. The target market for this camera was professionals, specifically seasoned professionals. Just because someone's getting paid for work doesn't mean they can pick up a 4x5 monorail like this and make the most of it. Um, these are very, very hard cameras to use and even harder cameras to master. You can, you can take a picture with it right off the bat. You can figure it out. But getting to a point where you can really capitalize on this camera's capabilities is a really, really long road. It is very versatile for studio work. You can, of course, do landscapes and architecture with it if you don't have to take it too far away from your car because they are, I've taken this out into the field before on a wheeled cart. It's really unpleasant to pull this up and down hills. Uh, they are lighter than many similar cameras, such as the Calumets and things, and the Burks and James. They're of an older vintage, admittedly. But these are very lightweight cameras for their size. They're extremely modular, and we'll see some of the modularity in video two, and just how much this camera really can do. They are suitable for any type of photography, whether you want to do landscapes, architecture, portraits, product work, crime scene, forensic photography, doesn't matter what you want to be into. This camera, if you really learn how to use it, can really help you master that photography. And they have, this has a full range of lenses and back movements, meaning that the standards on both the front and back are equally movable and limited only by um, where the grooves are in the movement mechanism. The, um, all of the movements also for this camera, and this is, this is a big deal and something monorails offer, all of the movements are made on the lens's axes. So if we loosen one of these up here really quickly, there we go. So when we move it, you can see here that the movement is aligned with the middle of the standard and that's where the lens's optical axis is. And that is a preferable type of movement to a movement which is done not on the lens's optical axis. Movements like that give you better control, movements on the, on the optical axis give you better control over um, the, the effects and the benefits of lens movements. Outside the scope of this video, just worth noting. These were made, probably were, made by Cambo in Holland. I couldn't find exactly when production began, but as of 2014, five years ago when I wrote this script, <laughs> that's uh, how long I was sitting on this before I got around to making it, um, 
these appeared to still be in production in 2014. I don't think as of 2019 that this model is still in production. I think Cambo is still making cameras, just not this one. But if I'm wrong, please let me know. They were preceded by the Calumet CC400, kind of, in that I think Cambo bought Calumet's camera division. There was some kind of agreement there. And so this, the, this is not in any way like a CC400. I've had two CC400s. This is way more capable and lighter. It was concurrent with the Cambo SC1, 3, 4, SCN2, SCX2, NX, Ultima Legend, and SF. Cambo, I believe, is making far fewer models of camera than that today. So let's take a look at this camera and come to understand what all of the different stuff on it is. On the camera's top, well, we're not really gonna be able to see the top, but here there should be a bubble level. Uh, it had broken off sometime before I bought this. Here is an actual bubble level. And then also on the back, there should be another one right here that has also been lost. And it looks like there had been one here on the front that had been has been removed. So this should have four bubble levels on it. One that gives you orientation this way and one that gives you orientation the other way so that you know when you're level. This is the front standard right here, this whole assembly going from this bit down here with the wheels up to the top here, this little part that unscrews. Also on top here we have the release clips. These allow you to remove the film back, the lens board, and they also allow you to remove the bellows to put a bag bellows in. When I said this was modular, I, I really meant this is super modular because you can put a bag bellows in it um, and really just take apart tons and tons of stuff. And we'll see how to do that in the second video. We'll take this camera apart. On the front, we have the lens board here and the lens board mount, which is what it mounts into. Let me take the lens board off and we can see a little bit better what that mount looks like. There we go. Also on the front standard, we have all of the controls for your tilt right here. Oh, that doesn't have to be undone. That's why it's giving me such a problem. Anyway, this is your locking knob right here. This is your control knob. And move this out just a little bit here so we can see a little bit more of the movement ability, just like that. And one thing that's really good to have uh, when you're shooting four by five is an angle finder. So if we put the angle finder on here, we can see that, ah, come on. I'm gonna put it here. Oh, it's got a magnetic base, that's nifty. Let's see if this thing's ferrous. It is not, okay. So we, I can tell you that it goes up to a 25 degree angle that way. And a, looks like a 30 degree angle the other way. So tons of movement. The back is the same way and w functions the same way. Oops, wrong way. There we go. Then here we have the locks and unlocks for the rise in the fall, and you can see these detents here. This deep one is your zero detent. So when you click into here, you're at neutral as long as both of these standards are in neutral. And then if you go up to the top, you've got three convenient settings. And then you can unscrew these caps if you would like to take these off for maintenance. I'm not sure if they made extensions, although it, so you could have even more rise. It wouldn't shock me if they did. And we'll tighten these back up. This here controls your swing. You can swing it this back and forth. You have a, oh, you have, here you go. You have a degree marker right here and you have a degree marker here to let you know how much you are doing your swings. So with this camera, you definitely don't even need to have an angle finder, which is nice. And then, while this is unlocked, 
This also allows you to do shift back and forth. So you can do swings and shift with this camera. And it has a zero detent. So now we know everything is lined back up properly. And on the back, we have all of the exact same functions. They work exactly the same way. If we roll this out just a little bit, one thing we can see here is that if your camera movements have caused this to be off balance, you can loosen the monorail and you can adjust the position of the monorail against the bracket to regain proper, uh, a proper center of gravity on your tripod to give you a more stable image. The camera's back is a standard high-end spring back and it has this handle that allows you to open up the whole thing to put your film backs in and out and then close it. It does close with a lot of force so you have to be mindful not to let it slam shut lest you risk breaking your focusing screen. There we go. We'll take the, if you want to shoot in portrait mode, you simply take your film back off, rotate it, close that, and now you're able to shoot in portrait mode. Orientation, not mode, better word. So th that's, <laughs> that's the Cambo. That's everything about the Cambo that we need to really look at right now. It's not a light 4x5 camera by field camera standards, but it's lighter than many studio cameras, um, especially given the amount of control that it gives you as a photographer. And also, one thing, I mean, look at how far we have this extended. There's not a whole lot of bellows sag either, and that's really nice, a good sign of a high quality bellows. The SCN differs from the SC2, and this is the SCN, in, in two ways. The monorail on the SCN is five and a quarter inches longer, which is about 135 millimeters longer than on the SC2. And, um, I'm sorry, it's shorter. The SC2 has a monorail, which is five and a quarter or 135 millimeters longer. And the back repositions on the SCN instead of revolving. So if you want an even higher end camera with more capabilities than this one, you want to look at an SC2. But the result with the SCN is that it's 1.3 pounds, which is about 0.6 kilos, lighter than the SC2, which is technically a higher spec camera. So if you are looking for a monorail camera to take into the field, this is your Huckleberry. Well, let me be a little bit more exact on that. If you're looking for an affordable used monorail to take into the field, this is your Huckleberry. And um, there are other field monorails like Sinars and things like that that you can use, but they're way more expensive. These can be had for, well, let's just say a whole lot less money than a Sinar or most any other camera. Anyway, this is a fun camera. I'm really looking forward to video too. Anyway, if this video was helpful, please give me a thumbs up. That lets me know that I'm creating content which is useful and beneficial to you. If you have questions or comments, please leave those below. I'm more than happy to answer those, and I'm pretty good about responding fairly quickly. Suggestions for future videos, same thing. If you would like to, uh, if you'd like to subscribe to find out when I have more videos, about photography and cameras in general, please do and turn on the, the notification bell to find out when they're released. If you're an amateur photographer who has taken pictures with the Cambo SCN2, then um, by all means, please feel free to leave a, uh, a link to your album in, a, in, the in the comments. And one last thing, thank you everyone very much for watching and I'll see you in video two.